So I took my T4i and an L glass and tried to make something special. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What is the deal, beautiful people? It's your boy Ramon, Lifestyles Defined. So I want to share an experience with you guys going back to uh, <laughs> what I would consider my old dinosaur at this point. So my Canon T4i, this was one of the cameras that we started the we started the channel on it. You know, we first we started with a T3i, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, but the the servo would never really or it didn't even have servo. So when you hold up a product in front of the camera, it would never autofocus. It annoyed the bejesus out of me. So we upgraded to a T4i. And for a good while, like a year and a half, almost two years, a lot of our videos were shot. All of our videos were shot on that camera. And it was, <clears throat> it was very faithful to me. So it's been sitting on the shelf because as I, as I took on street photography, I decided to get different tools. So I started with an NEX. Then I went to an A7, and now I'm on an OMD, uh, an Olympus. And I, I still jump back and forth between any of those cameras. But, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't know why I'm dying right now. One of my my uh, my major paranoia things is I hate complacency. You know, it, it hasn't served me well in my career at one point. And, and I, I'm always aware, uh, paranoid, so uh, of being comfortable too comfortable to where i'm not performing where i should be and this this habit this 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 uh this paranoia this this thing shows in my photography and, and what i mean by that is very rarely will i use the same camera over and over again which is why uh it's part of the reason i enjoy owning so many different camera systems i, I have i have two sony's i have a panasonic i have an olympus uh, i have a canon uh and and after that <laughs> after that fuji review i'm looking to get a fuji too god damn it uh but i i always want to make sure that i can pick up a camera i don't care what camera it is and and operate it and never lose sight of of the foundations of composition and the foundations of of light versus uh exposure and and just be a photographer and i've been i've been in situations and i've also seen people where you know they go somewhere oh you're a photographer right can you take this picture and someone hands them a camera at an event and they go i i don't know what the fuck this is i i i shoot sony with this camera and shit i don't know what this is you know and I don't, I don't want to be like that. I want to be better than that. I, I want to be able to prove my worth when, whenever it, it needs to be proven. You know what I mean? I, I don't want to go somewhere and my one chance, someone says, you know, Ramon's a great photographer. Someone says, right, let, show me, let me see something. And they hand me some, some camera and I'm just like, uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know how to use this, but nonetheless, this is where this came from. So I had a friend, uh, it was about that time to unearth the dinosaur and, and my boy Jeff, he has uh, he has a 14 to 40 L glass lens. And I've been meaning to get at this lens because uh, I've heard so many good things and seen so many good results from Canon's L glass. Uh, as it turns out, this is one of the mediocre ones, but nonetheless, it's still L glass. So I decided to to borrow that camera for a few days and, and take it out and, and just sort of do what I do with this camera as part of that exercise in my photography no matter the tool you know what i mean it, it shouldn't matter what kind of of a uh, hammer you use as as a carpenter you should still be able to or what brand of camera oh it shouldn't matter what brand of hammer you use as a carpenter you should still be able to build your house so i grabbed it and i went out and i started to notice uh madness so as it stands uh, this is not as easy as I thought it would be, technically speaking, in the Sony world. So in the Sony world, if you put full frame glass on the APS-C sensor, you are able to, uh, the camera adapts and you can, you can take advantage of it. Here, not the case. Uh, and the, the lens I found was a lot softer than I thought. And then, uh, of course, I forgot about the crop factor. So 
my initial thing looking at those numbers 14 to 40 as a focal length i expected to be shooting super wide and that's that's what i went out to do but i forgot about the crop factor so 14 to 40 uh <laughs> 14 to 40 on a crop sensor puts me at about a 24, somewhere around there. And that's usually what I would shoot anyway. So I was like, ah, oh, damn it. It's not an exciting, super wide focal length. It's something I'm used to shooting all the time, but whatever. And then I would get home uh, and I would look at the image. And I just wouldn't be happy, but I didn't give up. I, I went back out for a few more days and I captured a few more shots. And even though it wasn't the best of the combination, you know, like I'm sure there are other APS-C lenses I could have gotten for Canon that would have given me so many, so much better results. Uh, in fact, I'm almost sure that that 18 and 135 STM lens that I use for video would have given me better results, but it was beside the point. I wanted to prove to myself that it wasn't the camera I could still get really good results. Uh, so, like I said, the, the first thing I noticed was the disparity in the, the, the full frame, the APS-C. The second thing I, I noticed when really taking it serious was the optical viewfinder. Oh my God, I am never going back. And I know a lot of you guys still shoot optical viewfinders because you still shoot Canon and you still shoot Nikon. And you, you, you know, you all claim, you hold on to that claim that, oh, it's so much better, so much clearer. Uh, there's no LCD lag, all this. Trust me, guys, the one defining feature of an EVF is the ability to see the uh, see the exposure of your image while you're doing it, not after you've taken the image. And that gives me a certain confidence that I was lacking when shooting with this Canon and this lens. Uh, but I, I, I may do, I may do, but it, it just reminded me that I'm never going back to an optical, to an optical viewfinder. Uh, I never realized just how noisy the images coming out of the T4i. And it's an older camera, it's an older sensor, and it handles noise a lot different than a lot of the newer cameras. I mean, I was getting noise at relatively low ISO. Uh, what I thought was 1600 was low, but I had to remember, oh my God, back then 1600 probably was pushing it. You know, 800 was probably where that camera was, was sort of approaching the limits. Uh, so yeah, I, I was getting like crazy, crazy noise in the images. Uh, but in post, I had to re edit a lot of these images because the noise, the type of noise that I was getting and these shots kind of resembled a film grain noise. So I can't believe I'm saying this, uh, but it was actually pleasurable noise and grain that I was getting in these shots. So although I did re-edit the images to take away some of the noise, I didn't take out all of it because it was it, it, it was kind of dope and it gave it gave the images coming off of this T4i their own character. And, and it was something that uh, there were images that I couldn't reproduce with any of my other cameras that I own right now. So I thought that was super dope. But above all, uh, going out multiple days with this camera and learning about the limitations and, and dealing with the uh, with the buffoonery and I say that in a, in a snarky way but it's not it's no one's fault but my own with the lens the, the L glass on on the APS-C sensor uh, it really and truly forced me to focus on my composition and storytelling and at the end of the day I mean I sat through I sat through editing and I looked at these images and I almost did not make this video. I almost scrapped it. I almost just racked it up. So that was just me playing around. But the lesson was to be learned at the end because I sat back and looked at a bunch of these images and, and I was like, wow, my composition was on point here. Uh, my storytelling was on point here. And oddly enough, I mean, you know, your, your camera is supposed to be a tool to achieve your storytelling it's supposed to just fade away and although the camera didn't fade away in a good way it didn't remove itself from the situation in the way you would want to or you're thinking of when you talk about a fuji and how how great it is to use the dials and it just it, it didn't fade away in that way but because i wasn't even where i said you know what fine uh, we know the lens is fucked. We know the settings is fucked. There's going to be a, a ton of grain, whatever. I'm just going to get this shot. And when I did that, I was actually quite pleased with the results. 
And that's my lesson to learn from this. And that is why I I still do things like this. These these weird ass assignments, personal assignments. It's because I, I feel like even though I've been shooting seriously for about two and a half, three years now, there's still lessons out there like this for me to learn. And as I grow as a photographer, I don't think there'll ever be a time when there's not a lesson out there like this for me to learn. I think that's dope. I wanted to share that story with you guys. I wanted to share that lesson with you guys. And I also want to hear uh, if you guys do this to yourself, you subject yourself to punishment <laughs> or what's a lesson that you learned uh, that you didn't you didn't think you would learn or you, you know, it just by happenstance, you learn something. You go, wow, that's interesting. Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like the video. Uh, I want to take this time to let you know about our Facebook group. Uh, we have a really good community over there. A lot of people submit their images or just post them really. And we all hop in and offer uh, feedback and, and maybe some tweaking suggestions. It's, it's a dope community. So if you're on Facebook, come join us. Uh, the link to the group is in below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We got plenty more content coming. My name is Ramon. I'm out of here. Peace.